Hello and welcome to On the Other Hoof. It is the week after Aintree and we have another national for you. But before we move on to that national, we have someone on our panel today who tipped up the Grand National winner. I don't know if it was to you guys on the video, but definitely on Twitter at about 50 to 1. He tipped it to me at 100 to 1. Did I back it? No. So, Adam, it's not you, I'm afraid. Oh. <laughs> uh, Callum, well done, my friend. <laughs> Very oh, good. Well done. It was me, was it? I, I, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Callum's week of celebrity status is now coming to an end. It's been crazy, <laughs> man. Another big winner. <laughs> <laughs> See, now the pressure's going to be on you for next week. Uh, next. I know, I know, I know. Are we coming back to oh, you? Oh, yeah. think I have some sort of mystic tipster now. Exactly. You're like, everyone will be coming back to you because they'll remember, oh, the young race guy, he, he, he tipped it up last week. What's going to win the National this year? I don't know. Uh, first Lieutenant? Uh, <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get Adam to pick it next time. Yeah, oh, Adam, it's your turn. Um, he's due. But yeah, joined by Callum Mazel, the pro tipster for the week. Um, Adam Webb and myself, Luke Elder, who had a shocking entry by all accounts. Um, but the flat racing is back in force this week, and we have a very good Guineas trial in form of the Greenham, where the exciting Kingman makes his return. But we're going to start off with the John Porter stakes at Newbury. And I know me and Adam agree on this, so we're going to start with Callum. And uh, Muta Shaded is not a short price favourite, but the favourite of the field. But there's one that you like, or a few that you like in the field, isn't there? There is, yeah. It's it's actually a really, really good renewal of the race. It's usually not the strongest of races, but I think the form will hold up in this uh, race throughout the year. Astonishing is a filly that I really thought was Im impressive when she beat Songbird on her final start of the year. She, I think they, they put some sort of tongue tie on her, uh, or a ring bit on her, and it made her settle a lot better. And She absolutely thrashed them that day. She was rated 92 that day. She's now rated 109 on the back of it and deserves to be. Um, she needs a strong pace to, to aim at. If she's ready first time out, then I think she's a massive, massive danger. I just think at a slightly better price, I think Pethers Moon, I've got the, quite hard to split between the two, and Pethers Moon is one of my horses to follow for the season. He just looks a horse that's going to improve as, as a four-year-old. I know Richard Hughes has been very keen on him. He doesn't take the ride today, but Sean Levy's on, um, who rode him at Kempton last time out when he won in November, and it was an impressive success. He's the one I think I'll go for. Um, but again, him, Musa Sharded, very, very interesting. I know you two will talk more about him. Uh, and Noble Mission is the solid horse. He's probably vulnerable against uh, some improving horses. But yeah, it's a really, really good renewal of this race. Yeah, um, as Callum mentioned there, me and Adam are both fans of Musa Sharded. I'll let Adam take the lead on this one. Well, his run at Royal Ascot, considering it was only his first start behind Hillstyle, was a really good run. Um, I've got no concerns about the ground because he won his maiden on heavy and that was a good performance that day. Uh, I just think he's an improving horse. I think the trip is um, no worries for him and I think he's the one they've got to beat, although I do agree with Callum about Feathers Moon and that he's one to follow. A noble mission, oh dear. It's good to see him back this season, but um, no, I'm, I'm not following him off a cliff this season, that's all I'm going to say. Cue him going and hacking up by about 10 lengths tomorrow. Um, the yeah, amount, Ruth and to admit for me. The amount of times I've been convinced that Noble Mission is a good thing. And then, <laughs> same. 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 Yeah, yeah, the one. Uh, I think the worst one was at Royal Ascot, I think, or might have been Champions Day, when uh, I think fencing might have broadsided him or Thoughtworthy. One or the other. Oh, uh, I remember that. The only time I was really against him and, and he, he did me was when I back NK at Goodwood, uh, and he beat it by nose. It was the most <laughs> horrible experience. <laughs> um, well, I'm not going for the Noble Mission, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him in the first three, because he pretty much always gets in the first three. He just finds winning very hard to come by. Uh, but I'm, I'm a big fan of Muta Shardhead. Won very nicely at Sandown last year. Um, I'd prefer to see him over a mile and a half. I think he's got stamina to burn, but I do think Newbury will play more to his strengths in the fact that it's more of a galloping track. Because if you look at him, he's a massive horse. He was a good third at Royal Ascot last year behind um, Hillstar and Battle of Marengo, who the second hasn't really franked the form, but at the time was a fairly useful horse. Um, in the field, I completely agree with Callum. I think Pether's Moon is the big danger to all, and well, especially to Musa Shardhead, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if he uh, won. But I just think Muta Shardhead at Newbury on a bit slower ground 
I think you could take a hell of a lot of beating tomorrow. You're not going to get a great price, but I think 9-2 to two is the biggest price you can get where it was earlier anyway. But, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of Move to Charlotte. Um, moving on to the first race at Air. Oh, I've lost myself, guys. <laughs> it hasn't taken long. It's the Novice Chase. The 240 is the first race. Uh, no, 205. It is 205. 205. 205, wow. That didn't take me long to screw up the order, did it? You <laughs> knew we were going to air. At least you knew we were going to air, so... Yeah, well, it was either that or Newbury again, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd just say, if anyone's got any questions or fancies for tomorrow, we'd love to hear them, and we'd love to well, try and answer your questions anyway. Um, we do is tweet myself, at the 13 or any of the other two guys, however, however you found our link, really. Uh, if you're not watching it live, then you can comment in down below, and we'll try and answer your question next week or something of the likes. Um, but the Novice Chase, yeah, a small turnout, but it's got a bit of potential to be a pretty decent race. Valdez is going to go, well, should go off the short price favourite for Alan King and Robert Thornton after the article. Adam, do you think Valdez is a good thing? No. Um, I'm not saying that in a bad way. I just think it's a two-horse race. But I just think Edward has been saved for this. I think this has been the target for a hell of a long time. And I think he is actually the one to beat even at the price. I know Valdez has the form in the book. But I just think that Edward's the improver. And I think he can win tomorrow. Yeah. Um, Callum? I I think Valdez should win, if I'm honest. Um, I don't back Chuck Thornton horses, and I will be leaving this race. But he's done pretty well on the horse, to be fair, this season. And he ran okay, or ran really well, I thought, actually, in the arc. Or before then, he's got form that's a lot better than Edwards. Edwards also not jumped anywhere near as well as Valdez has so far this season. I think Valdez in a small field on decent ground at two and a half miles, I think, is probably going to be his ideal conditions. And if he can't win that, then I, I think there'll be something wrong with the horse because he should be winning that. Yeah. I'm also against Edward, uh, against Valdez with Edwards, sorry. Um... I just, I'm not 100% sure stepping Valdez up to two and a half miles is the right thing to do. I, I, I'm not sure he'll really stay 100% on that. He's got to give Edward three pounds. And again, Edward's been really aimed at this race. Nicky Richards is a very shrewd trainer. And he was, he was a useful horse over hurdles. Probably never got a chance to really scale the heights that he could have. But he's not been too disappointing over fences. He probably... I thought he'd have beaten Pendra on debut at Carlisle when making a mistake two out, and it was a very, very bad mistake, and was just given time to get back into the race. But since then, he's been making good progress. He's got nine pounds to find with Valdez on face value, but I think he will be a better horse than 144. The other three, I can't really see getting too into it. But I think Edward is the one that is the one to beat tomorrow. I just, I'm a fan of Valdez, but I just don't think he's a two and a half mile horse. But we'll find out tomorrow. And I'll probably be wrong, as always. Um, moving on to the Fred Darling stakes for the Phillies. Um, and Adam is not so much a hit with the Phillies at the moment, apparently. So we'll go to Callum. <laughs> that joke may be revealed later. Maybe not. <laughs> uh, Callum with Fred Darling. Yeah, it's. I, I don't know if this is a particularly good race, but I think the 1,000 guineas picture in general I think is quite poor. There's... Nothing of real, any real standard at the moment for me. And considering horses like Rosina and Tapestry are leading the market and look the best horses so far, um, means it's an un unspectacular race. And I don't think we'll have anything coming out coming out of this going on to challenge them uh, at the head of the market. If I had to pick a winner, it'd probably be Joya, who I've been waiting for a, for a while to step up to seven furlongs. She, I think she'll she she'll have a, a made of lot of growing since she's last run. Before then, her win at Salisbury when she she scraped home, it didn't look particularly impressive at the time. It was actually form that's worked out really well. Some nice horses behind and she ran sufficiently well at uh, at Newmarket in the Cheveley Park where she had the horse that she beat the time before uh, in front of her that time. But I, I, I just think she's the one that's going to improve more as a three-year-old. That Certainly the now Thakira who was a lot smaller filly and Marco Botti said before that she, he was unsure if she'd train on she didn't run very well at all in the Breeders' Cup, but the ground was probably against her, according to a trainer. I think it was it was far too uh, fast a ground for her. This is going to be on her, her ideal ground, and her Rockfell win is the, is the standard set. So, I mean, I think she's she's got a chance, but time and again you see these horses that look like they're, they're quite small fillies uh, coming out early on in the season running these sort of races, and they never really perform. And I think Joyeuse is, 
is the one I think will win. Uh, Coral Miss as well got a chance. She her air win was, was quite impressive. If she steps up up in trip, I think she's got a chance. And Charlie Hills is one of the best trainers of fillies around. Actually, if you think of the horses he's had, top horses, all of them are fillies. He's rarely had a, a colt that's done well. So. Uh, again, Jay Wonder as well is an interesting one, and Dutch Courage as well as in my tracker um, as a potentially nice horse. I thought they were going to take advantage of a nice little market 93, but instead they're going to try and ruin it by seeing if she's a classic filly. So, um, yeah, joyous for me. Yeah, um, Adam? I agree with Callum. I really liked Joyous last year. I mean, her run at Royal Ascot just screamed out that she wanted to step up in trip when she was fed to Kiyoshi. Um, they stayed at six furlongs, and all those Callum said she scraped home at Salisbury. The form has worked out, and she was she finished close enough behind Border um, in Cheveley Park. And I just she's been crying out for a step up in trip. And I think even on this, I mean, she won on good to soft on her debut at Linkfield, and that was an impressive performance. Uh, I think she she'll have definitely trained on. I think this is the right race to start her off in, and she should win. Fair enough. Um, I had a really hard time dissecting this race, and I'm going to side with a horse that I was very, very keen on last year, and I think she would improve for a three-year-old, this Coral Miss, too. Uh, it was impressive up air, as Callum mentioned, but before that, I think it was Nottingham. Um, no, Haydock, sorry, not Nottingham. Silly. Uh, <laughs> Haydock uh, ran really nicely. He's obviously, obviously stepping up a trip. I don't think that would be a problem on her whatsoever. Tom Queeley gets on especially well. Um, it was more of a case of I, I won't have a bet in this race, but it was more of a case of I fancied her more than others, and but I don't especially, I wouldn't go out of my way to back her at all. Um, the one that I mentioned, well, that me and Callum agreed on that was interesting was Jay Wonder, who last year looked out of the world at her feet at going into York and then sort of flattered to, to really perform that day. Um, but it, I can't work out if it's a really good race or a really poor race for tomorrow. It's, I think it's the latter. It's definitely the latter yeah. for me. It's like, it, I, it, I don't know, it could, it could just go either way. Like, Valonia last year, I thought, might make up into a really nice horse, and then it's gone backwards since. Jay Wonder could have been anything. Joyers could be anything. I don't know, there's, there's a lot of question marks over horses, and it, they could go either way. But I'd serve with Coral Mist to, to advance a three-year-old, and I think she will. But, but uh, back up to air and horses that we have more of an idea about, and especially my tenant or yours. And we have to complain, Michael <laughs> is not here, and my tenant or yours is running. He's on holiday in Scotland, and I actually thought he was going to be going to air. Who knows, I might get a text tomorrow like, oh, guess where I am? And, uh, yeah, uh, you might you might get a selfie on Snapchat saying, guess where I am, and my tenant or yours is behind him with a hood on, so... <laughs> I, I, I'd like that, that, that leads me on to the, next, to the question I wanted to ask you guys. My son is seven now. We've known he's a bit of a nutcase for a long time. Yeah. He pulls very hard in his races. Yeah. Why has it taken so long to go to the hood? I don't know. Honestly, don't know. Is I think now they're at the crossroads of deciding whether they go for a champion hurdle campaign next season or do they actually go chasing with him. And I just think now they're going to test if the hood works, even earplugs as well. I mean, he's always been a buzzy type, and he always has been hard to settle. I mean, as Callum will wish, and he hopes, that he's run on the flat during the summer, because that could really help him. Um, okay, but then, if, going back to your point of if they're, ch they're, gonna go ch or they're trying to find out if they're going to go chasing with him, yeah. or stay hurdling for a champion order, then why have they brought him to a handicap? Why do they not do go to Ireland to test the champion order? I actually think he can win. I actually think he'll win this tomorrow. It's not a I, uh, prize. It's a decent little prize. Yeah. Yeah. What's but the prize money for, for the Punchestown race? So it, no, it'll be more, but... Yeah, this I mean, is easier, surely. It'd be a tougher... Forty grand to the winner. Yeah. You find I'm... more. You find more about the horse for sure, but I don't know. It's like fair play for them to be coming here and try and with a, re a genuinely really good horse and trying to yeah. pull top weight because we haven't seen that done since Denman really, and it's probably something uh, something that more trainers should do because as Callum said, it is a very good price tomorrow. But I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting that they've waited so long to go for a hood. But actually, onto selections now, <laughs> Adam. Well, I think my tent or yours will win. I just think that I think the hood will help him. The earplugs will definitely help. Uh, but um, for each way purposes, because that's where I think the betting is. And a little story. Well, I kind of let Guitar Pete go at Aintree, and I've decided with there's a horse I've been following all season. I am not going to let him go this time because I think he can run into a place. It's Flaxen Flair, who 
And my nap at the, for my nap of the festival each way, I could cry because he came fifth in the county. And <laughs> so <laughs> I think no, I think this is the first time all season he's actually running off a really low weight. Yeah, and right. I just think this will help him a lot. So were any bookmakers offering first five? In the county, a couple were, but because of because of normal each way terms, we decided that they weren't. We weren't going to count it as the fact that uh, is that we were going to say one, two, three, four, because the majority of bookmakers went four places. So yeah, I mean, each way nap of the festival didn't come in. Um, but yeah, I just think Flax and Flow. This is the first time this year he's running off a low weight, and the last time he ran off a low weight, oh my word, he was so impressive in the Fred Winter, and he has shown really, really good form this season in handicaps. So I just think. If there's any of these that are going to be second to my tent or yours, I actually think it'll be him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I. I would. Yeah. I wouldn't disagree with that overly. Um. Callum, do you think my tent or yours is a formality or? It's hard to treat it literally as a handicap because if you did, I think you'd be looking trying to get him beat. But he's just a class act, isn't he? And he's got his conditions. It's decent enough ground. It's two miles on a flat track, and that's his absolute ideal conditions. And there's a lack of pace. There is definitely a lack of pace. and There's a lot of forces that like to be held up. So that could count against him. But again, it would count probably count against his main rivals more than it will with him. And I think Court Minstrel in particular, who needs a really strong pace to aim at, and, and won this race last year. Um, if if it was a, a strong pace, then I think he'd had a great chance. But that would have been my title, yours as ideal as conditions anyway. So. First time hood, I think, and the and the is it earplugs? He's, he's got yeah, he's first time earplugs yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yes, yeah, it's it should, it could make a, a touch of a difference. It might help him, but I, I think he probably wins. Trying to find a, a danger against him is quite hard. I mean, if but why not? I'd have been quite interested in from a pace angle, but he's nine pound up the handicap. So, um, and and he was well beaten last year of one three one three four in this, and uh, until falling at the last. So. Yeah, it, it's it's my tent or yours to win. I won't be backing him at evens at all. I think that's a very uh, that's that's the, that's as good as should as he should be. But um, I'd like to see him win, and I think he will win. Um, come back to the pace angle. Who who is the pace angle other than Barry? Barrison. Barrison. Yeah. Could go up in the front. He did that well, when he won the. Um, yeah, no, that's that's what I was going to say. Yeah. The only one um, I can see. Going nearer to the pace is Cotton Mill as well. I yeah, think, I thought, yeah, yeah, Cotton Mill is just a mention. But yeah, it's a very good point. That there's no, not really much pace in the race. I mean, if Barisan wasn't twelve pounds out of the handicap in a quick calculation, um, then you'd have to give him a chance because he ran really well in the county on his reappearance for a long way, and I think it was, he he ran well, but. It, it was as if he'd improved, and he always does improve for the first run. But uh, but you're basically saying can he run to a what to a mark of yeah. one four eight and yeah. more? Yeah, I, which he can't. can't. No, he can't. Yeah, <laughs> you probably, probably see him in the Swinton next. Yeah, exactly. That's that's that was my next sentence. That uh, the Swinton will probably be his target again. Um, mm. but a quick point about this race. Um, I saw Paul Ferguson tweet earlier. If you're taking on my tenor yours on each way alternative tomorrow. Uh, note that Bet365 and Stan James are a quarter, uh, a quarter of the odds, and everyone yeah. else is a fifth of the odds. So, like that, th things like that can just help so much in races like this when you've got what, Courtminster at 15 to 2. Will, like, will Courtminster be out of the frame? Um, I don't know. Depends how he's, if he's got over his entry, but and the ground is dead as well. It's not. Yeah, yeah. it's not his ideal conditions at all. No. Yeah, he's a cause... strong pace of. And, and rattling fast ground. I mean, he got away with it last week at Aintree because the going changed to good to soft before that race, but he was he was the best horse in that race. And yeah. he was just given such a confident ride. Well, my, my point of view on this was, let's get my tent or yours beat. <laughs> and my next point was, how do I get my tent or yours beat? <laughs> and the answer to that was, I have no idea. Um, mm. You're going to have, you're going to really find it hard to get my tent or yours beat tomorrow. Um, I, I just think I, I, it's not a betting proposition once again for me, but hopefully you can just sit back and actually watch him win for once. Uh, I say for once, that's a bit harsh, really, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but back to the beginning start I mentioned at the start of the day, the Greenham um, Kingman looks to be a very warm order for this, but it's a very very classy race. I mean, obviously we've got the Craven next week as well. 
this time next week we'll know a lot more about the 2,000 guineas and probably the 1,000 guineas as well. But Callum, I know you're very sweet on Kingman. Yeah. I'm I'm quite sweet on a few of this. Again, I think it's arguably the the I can't remember a greeting with more strength and depth than this one has. I know we've seen some very good horses win the uh, win the groom greeting, notably Frankel and Acceleration second is not the the worst uh, classic trial you've ever seen, <laughs> but this one is just a lot better in the fact that Bar Kingman. There's a lot of potentially very nice horses in this with good strong two-year-old form and potentially to go better. And Kingman, I've been I've been really really impressed by Kingman on his debut in particular. He was absolutely brilliant. And beating Emirates Fly is a very solid rival. Been running well in Maidan this uh, this winter. I think it's very very solid form. He's got to improve from it, but I think he could. And he's had he's had a setback, but the fact that he's here anyway, I think is is a real positive. Knight of Thunder is one of my horses to follow. He's really impressed in his two starts. Got to go on, on slightly better ground, but again, the ground will actually be perfect for him tomorrow because it is quite dead out there. He's got a, a big chance. Astaire's already got Group One form in the book. Again, he's got to come into it if he improves for an extra furlong. Berkshire, one of my absolute favourites from last year. He's got to go well. Latterwell is one I'm, I'm against. I, just, I don't think he's he's going to uh, trouble these lot, if I'm honest. And Golden Town is the one I thought was overpriced at 16s. Had him a little bit shorter. He, he, he beat a really good horse in Red Galileo at, at York. And uh, he's, he was very green that day. If, he, if he's trained on and if he's ready, then 16 to 1 a big price. But... Uh, that's again, it's a big if because Saeed Bin Saru and Godolphin just aren't the kind of trainer that really targets these sort of trials. But I think Kingman will win it. Um, Gosson's in the form of his life, it's incredible. Every race I watch seems to be won by John Gosson. So I, I won't be taking 7 to 4, I won't be having a bet in the race, but it's an absolutely brilliant race and I can't wait for it. Yeah, today <laughs> I was really sweet on Night of Thunder for the whole day, and I still am. I, do, I, I think Night of Thunder, well, I think he'll win, but then seeing the Gosden winners go in, well, four he had at Newbury today, is ridiculous. Um, obviously, Kingman's for, Kingman's chance has to be boosted by that, and obviously he's the one that everyone wanted to be with at the Guinea, well, for the Guineas last year. I know you backed him, haven't you, Callum? I backed both, yeah, and him and Kingman, yeah. Um, but Night of Thunder, he has to step up in trip uh, for the first time. He's both done both his winning, well, all his winning at six furlongs on softer ground. Uh, people probably remember him last year for being the camera that Richard Hughes had for Channel 4. Uh, but one really impressively last time out. I don't think the distance would be a problem for him. I think the ground would be... Well, Callum hit the, put the nail on here brilliantly. It will be perfect for him. Um, but then you, you look more in depth at the race, and there is just so much depth to this one. The, the one I disagreed with Callum on was Berkshire. I think stepping back in trip for seven furlongs just screams that it's a prep for something. I don't think he's a seven furlong horse whatsoever. I don't think he's a miler whatsoever. Um, the only way he'd have come into calculations for this is if the ground was genuinely really soft. Um, I think he'll be a derby horse later on in the year, but at seven furlongs and a mile, I wouldn't really be too interested in him. But it's, I, I have it between Kingman and Knight of Thunder for sure. Um, I couldn't tell you he's going to come third, though. <laughs> um, Adam, your fancy for the green one. Um, it's Kingman for me. I'm just going to make the point there will be pace in the race because we've got a stare who's um, was a very good sprinter last season. I don't think he'll see seven furlongs out personally, but he'll take them along at a good clip. And I think uh, it will just play into the hands of Kingman and Knight of Thunder. Um, with Kingman, I mean, he had his setback, yeah. But everybody's been saying that it, you've heard different rumours. I mean, I've heard that it's been a, um, it wasn't as bad as first being, and there were others that made it out to be so bad that you, you should avoid them completely. The fact that John Gosden even came out, if you remember, he came out and said something like, oh, that's the first I've heard of these rumours. He's absolutely fine in the barn. So it's, you know, you don't know. But I really like Kingman as well. Um, it's Sandown win. I mean, yeah, he beat Emirates Flyer, who is a good yardstick. And I know that you weren't exactly impressed by that, Luke. I know that you said... I, yeah, I... I th it's not that I wasn't impressed, but I think maybe I had too high expectations. Yeah, I can see why, though, because he's basically the first horse in Frankel. I mean, Frankel obviously carries the same colours, and if you see a horse in them colours who's put up a debut as he did, you're obviously going to... Everything you're going to compare to is going to be Frankel. And the poor horse, If he were, even if he won everything this season, everybody would be like, yeah, but he wasn't as good as Frankel, which should be harsh on the horse. We, I think the problem is we've all got too high expectations now because Frankel was just 
a freak. And unfortunately, every horse after that now is going to be compared to him. So, you can't, I kind of feel for Kingman. He's not he's not been on the track yet this year. Yeah. So, hopefully he can win tomorrow. And I hope he, he is my guinea's horse as well. And I hope he can go and win that as well. But I think if you're looking down as well, I mean, you said about Barcher, I think this is it's too short for him. He needs 10 furlongs already, I think. So, But yeah, Kingman for me all the way. With the Kingman as well, I was at Sandown last year. Um, was it Solario? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, he he didn't really impress me visually, but I ex- I'm at Newbury tomorrow. I expect that he will have grown a lot because he's had a, a lot of time off, what, 224 days off. Part of that was because of the injury, but I'd expect him to be a much stronger horse uh, this year. It's... I also I also think as well that time off was done in the world of good because because they did consider going to Longchamp with him. And that could have ruined him. I mean, the ground that day at Longchamp for two-year-olds was just awful. But, yeah, I mean, it's probably the world of good that he's been off. And he's not had some of the harder races that some of the other two-year-olds will have had. So, yeah, I'm happier that he's coming into the season a fresher horse, say, compared to some of the others. So, um, Back up to air now. And this, this race involves a horse that many people regarded as a handicap banker for Cheltenham. But it also includes a horse that Callum stated before we came on air should go chasing. And Callum, you have a <laughs> wish. Um, Valco de Tutan is over fences tomorrow. Um, so are you going to stick with your gut instinct on uh, Valco de Tutan going chasing, Callum? He's frozen. Callum's frozen, right. Um, Adam? <laughs> <laughs> Amazingly, I've been going for Valco de Tuesday in all season, but I'm I don't I don't really want to side with him tomorrow. I, I mean, he likes better ground, and he's probably been we've been waiting for this race. But the one I'm going to go with is Upsilon Blur, who his owner uh, Raymond Green loves having winners at this meeting. You remember Merigo, who won the Scottish National twice. I do. And um, so yeah, he is the one that I think will win. A funny story I've got. A um, couple of uh, weeks before Shelton, there was a preview at Carlisle, and uh, there was a guy on the preview, I don't know who it was, but I was told this story by a friend, and they said that he basically gave up to Lon Blur a really good talking up, and then after it, Wilson Rennick turned and went, oh, thank you for the compliment. By the way, he's not running in the Grand Annual, as, as you think he is. So, yeah, it's it shows that he's missed Shelton, he's missed Aintree, and I just think coming in fresh is going to be the key to him. Mm, yeah, I, I don't overly agree with <laughs> this selection of Upsilon Blur. I don't know when we're going to get Callum back either. That's uh, That remains to be seen. It's a worrying thing, though, because he's hosting, and I don't know whether that could be a problem. Well, I, ju- I just checked, and the, the call is still going, so <laughs> we're good on that part. Um, yeah. Which is always a bonus, I, I feel. Um, but I think the one they've got to beat tomorrow is definitely many rivers to cross, unless there's a downpour of rain, then Desert Cry could take a heck of a lot of beating. He's had a break. He probably had three or four runs too close together. But many rivers to cross does look the one to beat here. Obviously, Wayne Hutchinson can't ride because he's injured his knee. So Robert Thornton takes over in the saddle. Doesn't really bother me too much. Uh, he jumped brilliantly for a chalk at Sandown, which is probably one of the hardest jumping tracks there is in England. Um, looking down, Lebacardi, I'm guessing, won't run. He ran today. Uh, uh, same goes for back to Baloo, so each way betting will be completely bombarded. <laughs> this, we're going to have likely six. Um, I'm just struggling to make cases for anything other than many rivers to cross. I think he's still a better horse than 144, but I know it's, it, it's a bit of a weak race for me. His Excellency was disappointed when fancied by a few rude judges at uh, Cheltenham in the Grand Annual, but for me, it's many rivers to cross the one they have to beat. Have we got Callum back yet? Yes. Yeah. Hey, Callum. The good news is I, I went back Sorry and checked. I went and checked the video. The video actually didn't drop. You know how it did with me and my awful internet. So the good news. Yeah, is I, I nearly accidentally though. pressed it to say to end it, and I forgot. Instead of pressing like the call, I nearly pressed the. Uh, yeah, the actual button to end the call, which is a bit, <laughs> bit awkward. So <laughs> it's like, so Adam, what's gonna boom? end the end of broadcast? <laughs> Um, so yeah, Callum, many rivers to cross. 
Oh, do we have to talk about this race? I left just so I didn't have to talk about it. Um, <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Well, there's, well, there's chases in this. It, it, it's, it's, uh, the horse that should be going on is chase in Valco de Tuesday. Um. <laughs> Shut up. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think many... I don't fancy many rivers to cross, to be honest. I mean, he didn't really have much in hand last time out at, at Ascot when I backed him. Um, and the main man is off, so... Yeah, uh, what, Desert Cry, I think, has got a squeak. Um, what made you back in that day, Callum? Um, I just thought, you know, good run at Cheltenham. <laughs> um, <laughs> decent ground, I thought plenty, it was a pretty poor race, you know, and uh, <laughs> thought everything else was in, in favour. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I really don't know, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you sound as confused about this race as I did. <laughs> There's nothing I really fancy in it, if I'm honest. I think I can't. I I, I will honestly not put a selection up. I really don't fancy yeah, anything. I I was pushed to put many of to cross up. Um, like, even just scanning it, I just don't know. No, and yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, price wise, uh, Musa Shah had one more word, uh, one word more, and Frock Strot Rumor in the same race, and then in the Scottish National Rowalka they Farge. Oh. And adrenaline flight. He's had no winner since Cheltenham. They're not going to win tomorrow. So Musa Shard is straight out the window, and there goes my so, there goes one of my Scottish National Four. So oh, bloody hell. Adrenaline flight. Yeah. That's a weird one. Was he, was he the one that was staying on? Yeah, he was the one that was staying on the four miler at Cheltenham. Yeah. I don't think he particularly got a great ride. I think he's, the right. He's tons out of handicap. Yeah, he's miles out of handicap. But at Cheltenham, I could be wrong, but on my eye when I was watching it, I thought the rider stopped riding a bit before the line. And then realised he had to keep yeah, going. Yeah, and he had to start again, and the horse went again. I mean, he was fourth in a fairly decent race, but he'll have to improve a ton. I'm surprised if there's not many coming from the four mile ago to the Scottish National. We'll probably make that point again in a minute, but. I expected the likes of Midnight Prayer, Sun Tiet. One thing about Sun Tiet's going for the Irish National. The likes of Shut the Front Door and yeah, that? your shotgun paddies away for the season anyway. So yeah, well, most of them are going to Ireland next week, so it's a bit strange position because the Scottish Nationals normally a good race for that. So mm. yeah, the adrenaline flight is ten pounds out of the handicap. Mhm. Yeah. Um, yeah, but before that, we have another big handicap. Yeah, we'll get, yeah, but we we'll get. We'll get to that race when we get to that race. Uh, now we have the delight of the Spring Cup. I wish Michael was here so then I could just upload it onto him and say, just talk about every horse in the race because you love that. But I had real problems with this race. Um, Adam, go on, I'll throw you under the bus first. Uh, cheers. Uh, well, I had a look at this race and it's a really tricky race, but the one that actually stood up for me is the Clive Cox horse, Hyden Duke, who last time out is in August at Glorious Goodwood. Won a handy, uh, an apprentice handicap, but the manner he won it was just so impressive. Yes, it was over a furlong further, but I think the setback to a mile will not hinder him. So I think a, a bigger price. I think Highland Duke could win a big race. Yeah, you did what you did well to talk for that long about his race. <laughs> <laughs> um, Callum, go on. Yeah, there's some really there's some really interesting unexposed four year odds uh, that I think you should concentrate on most probably, but None of them really inspire on form. I mean, I'm looking at the favourites. So beloved. I mean, his three year old form is, is pretty modest. And the same can be said for a noble who was an impressive maiden win but didn't go on for it. But again, it's trained by Sir Michael Stout, uh, by Dan Zilli out of PRS. He's bred to be a lot better than this. So 86 just got in uh, at the bottom of the weights. So I think he's got to go on the shortlist as well. And Brown C. Brink, who ran second to Purcell, who's won since at Lingfield last time out, should uh, improve again, stepping back up to a mile, and uh, he beat Rockalong at Newmarket in September on his last try at a mile. He's been at seven furlong since then, so set back up to a mile should should suit him. Uh, if the ground is on the softer side, then um, I'm not sure that's a, a total positive, but I think he's probably the one to beat, just about, um, Gabriel's Kako as well is another one I think will definitely win a handicap at some sort some time. I, I think he's a very talented horse. Um, I thought he ran a cracker in the uh, in the Lincoln where he travelled really well, didn't really pick up that well, and I just don't think the soft ground was was for him that day. I think he re he needs genuinely good ground. If he gets that tomorrow, which 
is my doubt, um, then I think he's got a, a very big chance. I think he'll improve a touch as well for that first run back. He may, may just have needed it. So Gabriel's Kaka, I think, and Brown C. Brink, I think, are the two. Again, Foxtrot Romeo is another one I haven't mentioned, but he's absolutely thrown in on this old form. It's just whether he can prove that he can run to that sort of standard. But he, he was rated 114 in, in 2012. Um, and he's just shown absolutely nothing since, including last time out at 10 furlongs. So that's clearly a, a strange one. He's not showing that much. And there's horses that were defected from the Lincoln off to the, off to the ground as well. And good luck to Dubawi Sound as well. Like, um, some of the owners on Twitter are on Twitter, and he set up the syndicate. Um, I just best of luck to that horse. But I think they've got the Victoria Cup as their, uh, as their aim for the season anyway. But very best of luck to them. Yes. Is that Robert Jones in that lot? It is, yeah. Yeah. Um... You mentioned so beloved. Do you think the price we're we're getting a Irishine Murphy factor? Because obviously, Big time. Yeah. yeah, you get three pounds for nothing. Mm. Like he he is all but a pro now, bar the three next to his name. Yeah, so. I don't know what I don't know what Roger Tarleton said about him actually. Because no. I read I saw the stable tour the other day and I didn't look actually what he said about him, but I assume he said something quite positive. And like you said, Irishine Murphy. Horses are, are always been very well backed, and rightly so, because he is claiming three pounds for nothing by the way he's riding. Yeah, um, I, I've taken a different approach to this. I'm quite surprised to see my horses being backed. Uh, it's, uh, you, you can argue how to say it. It's either Charles Camoin or Charles Camois. I'm sure Michael would go for the French for it, um, if he was here. So we're going to go for Charles Camoin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can yeah. overrule Frenchness when he's not here, which exactly. is good. Exactly. Charles Camoin. <laughs> he, he won't watch it as well, so he won't know. He's probably watching live right now. <laughs> yeah, I'll get a text in a minute. Um... That English knob. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't run over... Charles Camoin hasn't run over a mile for a long time. And just thinking, Charles Camoin actually won at Ascot last year when me and Michael were there. But he hasn't run over a mile since 2011. And he was second by Tullius that day at Sandown. Since then, he's been stepped up to 10 furlongs, 12 furlongs, and everything in between. What I still question whether he actually stays that. Last time out, what? Last time out, he was ran off 91 on your weather. Before that, he ran off 98 on the turf, and he's now down to 90. So he's he's potentially thrown in. He's off his last winning mark. I don't think the ground will bother him too much. He won his maiden on soft ground. Whether he really prefers ground that he give remains to be seen. But over a mile, I think that could help him out. And Liam Keneary is a decent jockey booking for Sylvester Kirk. Liam Keneary gets on very well with the horse. Um, but again, this was just a race I just didn't have a clue in at all. I found Charles Camoy and vaguely fancied him. It's just it's a very, very, very tough race. I wanted to buy a Brockle Bank as well. But he's gone up £10 for finishing second twice, which I think is unbelievably harsh. Uh, they were good seconds for sure, but I'm still not 100% sold on him. But it will be an interesting race to watch, and I'm will, not willing to say much more on it. But the price-wise horse is one more word for that uh, for that race. Uh, it's a really hard race. <laughs> um, any, ever, either of you got anything else left to say on that? Or? No, not really, no. no. I don't really want to say that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Enthusiasm through the roof. Um, Moving on now to the last race that we're going to be covering today, the Scottish Grand National. Um, how have you, how's your guys' record in the Scottish National? Um, Pretty good. Okay. It's not the best, not the worst. Apart from last year when I should have backed God's Me Judge. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I had that the year, the year before and Aurora's Encore was second. I've been, <laughs> I've been tipping it up each way. And I was like, yeah, Aurora's Encore would not, come, not be out of placings, and I didn't back it. Um, and it came second. At what, did he, what, what did he do the year after, Luke? Um. God knows. I, I have I've backed the 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 two winners before then, which were Merry Go and B and B, who was with Tim or Beshabar. Yeah, I, I have Beshabar as well. Beshabar. Mm. Oh. It, it is a race that I do think um, a lot of fancied horses do run well. I think it's yeah, it is it is quite. It's not easy, but. It is, you know, the sort of horses that are going to run well. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. My, my story from the Scottish National is I had, it was about 16, 17. No, I wasn't old enough to gamble, per se. Yeah, I know, right? Breaking the rules. Um, but I had, I think I had something like a pound each way or two pound each way to stay or play. 
who placed in the Grand National, and I got a, I think I got a fiver back, and I didn't really want it, so I said to my mum, put, put a fiver win on Merry Go. And then I was playing cricket later that night, and then she later that day she comes up and hands me some money. So that was a happy time for me. But I've never actually seen myself back the winner of this race. Everything I seem to back comes place, which is probably what's going to happen tomorrow as well. But we digress. Um, Tidal Bay is the one that's sort of probably going to be annoying a lot of trainers tonight by keeping their horse out of the handicap. I want to say a lot. It's the majority of the field. Um, Adam, I'm sure you want to talk about Tidal Bay. Oh, I love him. Um, Adam. Could you please not repeat the word that I'm sure he muttered when he got brought down at the Canal Tunnel last week? In the no, I'm not going to mutter them words. <laughs> I will say, along the lines of what on earth is Golden Way doing in the race and why on earth has he brought down one of my main fancies in the race? Uh, yeah, he is a bit monkey. I think Donald McCain hates him more than most people after he took across the bay out of the water jump like the Annemarie is. He saw the sables and thought, I'm going there, and he took the leader with him. Yeah. So, yeah. The thing is, though, he actually jumped really well in the National until he, got, until he came down, because a lot of people were worried that he wouldn't get into a ribbon. Uh, it's a week after. Uh, it's a big ask. I mean, it's absolutely a huge ask, but if it's a horse that's going to do it, it'd be him. Uh, I'm going to say place claims for me at best. I don't think he'll win, but I think place If he goes and wins tomorrow... I'll hold my hands up and say fair play. If it were yours, what race would you go for? This, because I think of the softer ground, because I don't think it's going to be that soft when it comes to Bet365 Day. I, I can see why they're running here. And Nichols has made sure. I mean, he said he schooled him, he says he's galloped him, and he says he's fit, fresh, and well. And he's, hey, he's, and he's also missed Cheltenham, so why not? I, I can see why they're running here. Definitely. And he has place claims for me. Uh, I can see why he's running him as well, because he's got Sam Winner off 10 7. So. And Nick takes a Nick Schofield takes a ride. He's got a huge chance. I'm not going to run through the whole field, by the way. Just to, just to, just to say, it just feels like I am. Um, the couple that I like. I mean, Mendip Express is one I've been hugely keen on since his debut over fences at Weatherby. And I mean, he he wants to go left-handed and a bit of give in the ground. And it's and these conditions are absolutely perfect. And the only concern I've got is that last run at Newbury, where he finished a very tired horse and also a sick horse as well. So. You have to take it into consideration that he's got to be fit and fresh for this. So I just wanted to mention something about Mendip Express. Yeah. That I'm, I heard something. I'm not sure how much truth is behind it. Okay. Um, after his last run, apparently he picked up an injury, and apparently they weren't overly overly keen on running him. Hmm. I thought he was out for the season. Yeah, I, I, I heard well. exactly that, that he was out, out for the season, and then he might even be out for the start of next season. He so must the have improved. Fact, the fact that they were saying they're saying that and then running him again this season, wh- I mean, whether there was any truth in that, completely, or if, if I've heard a load of nonsense, I, 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 I wouldn't want to take eleven to one about him tomorrow. Well, I don't think, I don't think they were keen on running him anyway. Were they at that Newbury run? No, no, Harry, Harry, don't think. I don't think Harry Fry was anyway. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna divulge into the full uh, thing because I've already met no. with someone. Yes, but see. um, yeah, I. I just wouldn't be keen on him tomorrow, so um, yeah. I interrupted Adam, so carry on. Well, others I like. I mean, Green Flag has got to be one that comes under the shortlist. I think the drying ground will help him. I know he's won on soft to heavy, but I just think to get four miles, to get in the trip, he, I think he'll want better ground. And that form in the Bayless and Harding, we've been banging on about it the last week. I mean, Holy One Mafia. And to be fair, the package ran really well in the National for a long way. It jumped a lot better than I thought he would. So, uh, others that I like... Um, I do like Goldsmith Judge again. I mean, Aidan Coleman's an eye-catching uh, booking, considering that uh, Callum's favourite jockey could have jumped onto Goldsmith Judge. I mean, Wayne can't ride because he's injured his knee. Uh, one further down, I quite like um, Raka Defarge, who unfortunately is price-wise, and uh, he's very yeah. at the minute. I think he's been crying out for four miles as well, Raka Defarge. I just think this has been the plan, or the Bet365, but they're also here, I think, as well, because they they're going to get softer ground, so... And one other that I'm going to put up is Mr. Marker, who um, was third in this race a year ago, and I think he's been trained for this again. So the shortlist, I'm going to put, I'm going to say mend it, but that's more of a, I'm not so sure. Tidal Bay, Raraka Defarge, and Mr. Marker, and the winner out of them, ooh, I'm going to have to say Raraka Defarge, but with Price Rises record, I'm really worried. <laughs> um, Callum's turn now, but. Are you going to mention Trust and Times? Uh, I might uh, mention the fact that I don't really think he's got a chance. Well, um, he's, well he's got the elusive form of Pano de Rey. 
Yeah, yeah, that is that is true. His hurdles run was very, very good, but he hasn't shown anywhere near enough over fences so far um, for me. And that does uh, match in his mark the fact he's rated one three four. I think he's rated one four seven over hurdles. So, but I mean, he's got a massive. Uh, he's got lots to give him in handicap, which I think is a an instant negative for me. I hate backing horses out of the handicap. A few pounds, yeah, but when it co- gets to five to six pounds without any sort of claimer on, I think it's significant. So um, I much prefer others. And he doesn't convince me as staying, and he doesn't convince me as a jumper, and he just doesn't convince me as a Scottish national horse. And a lot of them don't, to be fair. I don't fancy Sam Winner. I've, I've never had him as a real strong stayer like this. I know he won on over three mile two at Cheltenham, but he was getting weight from both Lebec and uh, shut the front door, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, so he just doesn't convince me as a four miler, but we'll, we'll see. Mendy for Express, I don't fancy. Hadrian's approach doesn't jump well enough. Gosme Judge, he's got to go in with a shout again. We've seen past horses win this and run well again. Green Flag, I just appeals far more than anything else in the field. And, I think he's high, he's highly unexposed at the uh, trip, and the fact he's not even run at this sort of trip. But he's by Milan, and I just think he's screaming out for it. If I'm honest, so he ran on really well behind Holy Well in, in that really good base and Harding handicap that Adam was uh, talking about, which has worked out extremely well. Um, Lucinda Russell's a very very good trainer. Um, I do like backing uh, Scottish based trainers in the Scottish National as well because they do seem to target the race. I think he's the the one to beat. Um, and 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 clearly, and um, off one four two, I think the betting does say so. But I think he's got a huge chance, and he appeals far more than the rest of them. Tidal Bay as well, one six six. I think he's he's vulnerable for a win. I think he'll run well because he's such a brilliant horse. But I mean, he, he was beaten at Chepstow off one six three. I don't see why he can win off one six six. I know he was a, such a good run again, but um, I think he's vulnerable. But it, it means that a lot of them, I think, have got much lesser chances than they would if they were in the handicap. Other one, Yes Tom as well. I think Yes Tom's a very, very interesting runner for Stuart Crawford, who is my <laughs> Irish Irish Dr. Richard Newland. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it should be fitting that I should be backing him for the national, uh, for the Scottish <laughs> national, but Green Flag, definitely my selection. I'm interested. Do you have a Welsh version of Dr. Richard Newland? Or, um... <laughs> no, Welsh trainers, I, I really don't get on well with, like, Tim Vaughan, I, I rarely ever back, and Evan Williams as well, not a fan. So it might be Rebecca Curtis. I, I, yeah, I'd, uh, <laughs> I'd, get, I'd get on really well with Rebecca Curtis. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all do. Adam, what are you thinking about, mate? That's disgusting. No, I'm not thinking about anything. I just, I just remember when Callum mentioned Lucinda Russell, I just thought of life for it. Who Wouldn't that be just the perfect winner for the Scottish National? I mean, the story behind him and Campbell Gillies, I think that would be the story of the race. And I'd love to see him... Of the, of the ones handicapped out of it, um, or out of the handicap, he's got a brilliant chance. Raoul Defarge, though, he's got 18 pounds, technically, because he went up 13 for his win last time, and yeah. he's up five, he's got five out of the handicap as well. So, I mean, I don't know why you'd back him at 11 to 1, considering that massive no, hike. the price is gone now. Yeah, the price is gone. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because price wise has nicked it. So, um, have they not gone for the wrong wrong race? Could they not have just stayed and gone for the um, for the Whitbread or Bet365? I think called now. the problem is, as I said, um, the ground because apparently we're in for a dry spell for the next couple of weeks, and the rock of the Farge is better with, when you can get his toe in. I mean, it goes on good yeah, ground, but mid like Tidal Bay as well. They they they're hedging their bets that they're going to get softer ground up in. Scotland as opposed to if they wait two weeks and it's good to firm good in places and Tidal Bay wouldn't run on that I don't think Rarkub would run on that after his I don't know what his injury was but I know he was out for a year so I actually know mm. he ran in a, a charity race I remember watching that on our UK and I was like what's he doing in a charity race Are you getting ready for the Welsh National and then he just didn't come out so <laughs> yeah um, a quick question to you both of the Sue Smith pairing I've just noticed the jockey bookings and we mentioned about Claimers riding horses out of the handicap. Lacamon's one pound out of the handicap. Jonathan England takes three off, so he's effectively two pounds. Yeah. Mark. Feel the power. It would be damage limitation on his handicap mark. He's one three five, so he's five pounds out of it. But Ryan Mania takes a ride on him. I think Ryan would have probably had the choice on which one to ride, wouldn't he? So. And I think. Yeah, I can see why yeah. Ryan's. They, they the both. Ridden, they're both ridden each. That's probably a positive for um. Yeah. For feel the power, isn't it? Yeah. 
Um, or well, a huge negative for like a month. Or yeah, <laughs> or that one. Um, my selection is going to be laughed at by Adam now. Mary King. Oh, for God's sake! Oh. <laughs> he's is oh. at the handicap, but isn't at the handicap because Morris Lunen takes off five pounds. So effectively, he's undone two pounds out of the handicap that he is, and he's now three pounds well in. So effectively, Morris Lunen claims three off his actual handicap mark. Confusing, I know. Um, Mary King, I th- well, he does need about ten miles, I think. Um, four will do. Four will suffice for tomorrow. Um, Adam napped him last time. Oh God! Four. Yeah. Um, but to to Adam to save Adam's blushes, nothing went right from that day. He got yeah. hampered early on, and he was just never happening from that point. He was pulled up at an early stage in the race. Um, the ground was horrific. Yeah, that, that's that, the worst ground I've ever seen. That's another thing that was against him. Um, before that, he was third in the Peter Marsh behind Witchwood Brook, again doing his party trick of staying on way too late. Um, fifth in the Welsh National, where, again, it was another good staying performance before that. Fifth in the Hennessy when he was staying on again. All these points towards four miles. I think he's a very, very good place bet for tomorrow because he just does his thing. He'll just jump, and then he'll come off the bridle probably about two miles out. Morris will have to be very fit, and after his Ida explo- uh, exploits, he'll have to be. Um, but as far as win terms go, I, I'm, he's, well, he isn't the most straightforward horse. Everyone knows that. But just, I, it would be no surprise. And I'd be fairly confident of him being in the first four at least. Um, but it's such a messy race now that Tidal Bay has completely screwed up the handicap. But uh, <laughs> we won't complain about that. Um, and that is that concludes our... Uh, what previews of all the races? Um, a few questions that we've got in. Um, Kai Wills has asked if Kingman and my son are yours are uh, bankers for a double. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go so far to say bankers. No. I wouldn't say bankers. You could probably stick him in a double and get away with it. I'm just. Uh, they're too short. I wouldn't put you off. I wouldn't put you off, but for me, I I wouldn't do it personally. I mean, I think they'll both win, but I just couldn't be con. I wouldn't want to be parting with my money on my tent of yours at even money anyway, even in a double. So. Uh, and he also said, asked the panel, would you be worried about Kingman's injury or no. at seven to four? I wouldn't be worried about the injury because he's had a lot of time to get over it, and a lot of time to get over it. Um, seven to four though, but he's not at the moment. I'm seeing thirteen to eight. Uh, whether the seven to four is still around, I'm not sure, but I wouldn't really be piling at that price anyway, especially first yeah. out in the season on a three-year-old. Like that's just not something I'd be willing to do. Um, Simple Betting has got in touch. We don't really have a name for Simple Betting, so we're going to call him Simple Betting or Steve. Hi, Steve. Um, and not going to be touching at 92, but he has joyers in the 1,000 guineas at 33 to 1. Anything nice. like this race, get on before the race. Like, Yeah, it's going to nice. be with any, anything. It's a good bet. But it's, it's going to be the same with any, any horse. If you fancy it for a classic, back it before the race. If it wins, you're not going to get that price anymore. And if it loses, then fair enough, you're taking a gamble. That's what it's all about. And if it was unlucky in losing, then yeah, you're going to go pile in again. Um, exactly. Then that, that's like dream. That's like the dream. Don't yeah. back a hey, unlucky in running. Doesn't shorten, doesn't lengthen. Or well, you would like it to lengthen, actually. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you guys racing anywhere tomorrow? No, not tomorrow. No. Um, um, well, I'm at Newbury, so come say hi if you see me. Uh, also, if you're at the Craven next week, me and Callum shall be there somewhere. Yeah, both days. Yeah. Both uh, days. So if you see any either of us, come say hi. We'd love to meet you as long as <laughs> we're like Adam. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm just saying it how it is. Can I ask a question before we go? Okay. What was your highlight of Aintree? I know what Callum's is going to be, but Luke, for Luke as well, what was your highlight of last week at Aintree? Beat that. Beat that. Oh, he, he was stunning, he was. Waiting, um, so, I've been waiting so long for him to do that. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to ask Callum. Uh, well, unless he has a different one to Pino, I don't know. Callum's no. <laughs> He's kind of. No. You just, just sat there. No, Pino. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say, we're in a pickle right here because if Callum had left, we're at the end of the video and we've no one to ca- to stop the call. <laughs> so we just yeah. be sitting here making small um, talk about nothing, waiting for Callum to join well, the call again. <laughs> well, well, my highlight, yeah. well, my highlight came on the Saturday. It was, it, well, the Grand National was one of my highlights. It was a bolder say or success winning the Grade One Novice Chase. That was yeah, that was good. That was good. Really, I good. liked Whis- Whisper as well. Was a personal highlight. I thought that was 
brilliant to see him really climb up the ranks this year. And while I was with Molly at Aintree, and Molly said that he was put off back in Whitsburg because he looked dreadful in the paddock. Well, he did. He sweats. He's, yeah. He sweat before that, but it was a genuine muck sweat. It was like, oh, yeah. you will not believe. Yeah, uh, it was bad. And yeah. putting a performance like that against at Fisher's Cross, I mean... Yeah, I questioned at Fisher's Cross and Zarkan the cutting each other's throats at the front, but Barry gave him a lovely ride. He's getting back up. Uh, yeah, the, 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 it was just the, the best bit about the whole week, though, apart from Alder winning and Callum having a 100 to 1 winner in the national, was the fact that every single horse that went and raced at Aintree came back safe and yeah. sound. Yeah. That, that's a big, the best advert. I mean, on the first seat, I questioned the Grand National Fences whether they were still tough enough. And the national this year proved that you still got to jump the fences and give them respect. I mean, look at long, look at long run. Watching that race, mm. I was still as excited watching that race as yeah. I, was, I was five and watching that race. That was probably the best national I've seen in a good five, six years. Maybe even further back yeah. than that as well. Because I mean, long run went from the front. And he jumped really well, and he came to Val. Valentine's, it's the first fence that he's been let pop, and he's, he's just disrespected it completely, and it shows you can't disrespect them fences, and he's took a heavy fall, so, actually, that's the thing, well. if Longrun did go back to Aintree, I would not be worried, I thought he jumped really well, and loved it, um, absolutely loved it. <laughs> right, quickly before we round the video, Callum, why is Dan Ozar approval tonight? Uh, I, I haven't really had a look, to be honest, but um, probably, probably why is Dan. Okay, yeah. Probably said. Um, anyway, end of the video today. Have a great day tomorrow if you're having a bet. Um, and next week as well, let's hope we can see Tormor absolutely hurries up in the Craven. Naps, um, naps, naps. Naps. Oh, I always forget. Why am I forgetting naps? Um, Adam, nap. Oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> come back to me. Callum, nap. I'm going to do my uh, travels again. I fancy a travel tomorrow. So, um, Mutakayev in the opener at Newbury. Very, very well bred horse. Uh, should win that, although it's a pretty strong handicap. Okay, that, that's, that's that's now my play spot horse. I didn't have one in that, so I'm putting that in play spot. Yeah, and he's, he's going to be short, but he he I don't mind. I just very get... well regarded. <laughs> <laughs> um, retirement plan at Thirst. He's a horse to follow uh, off a mark of 100. There's a really good card at Thirst tomorrow, so if you were around that area, I'd strongly advise you go, and then I'll put my 10 or yours in. I think you should win, so there's your travels for tomorrow. Um, Adam? Still Sol in the first air, he's a, a lovely, chasing, lovely chasing type. I saw him at Aintree early in the season. Also, one more point just before we go. Why is Battle Group running in the Scottish National? He didn't want to go at Aintree last week. And the connections of Guniella will be absolutely furious. Um, <laughs> I'd be furious at Golan Wave and run. So. Um, <laughs> my nap for tomorrow is Night of Thunder. Really like the horse. Uh, seven furlongs, I think, will suit him more than it's going to suit the others in the field. Um, so not thunder for me, but thank you for everyone for watching. Leave comments in below. Don't forget to come subscribe to us, then you'll get told about all the videos that we do. Uh, just click the subscribe button below, then on your YouTube channel, you'll be told about everything that On The Other Hoof happens about on this website. Um, but thank you for watching. Callum, you ready? Yeah. Thank you for watching from everyone here at On The Other Hoof, including Michael, who's up in Scotland. Have a good day. Goodbye.